man, dude. I love beanbag chairs. I told you I slept on one for uh, a year. It's like slept on a, a beanbag for a year? Like that size? Rumpelstiltskin. Rumpelstiltskin's a good man. Yeah, this is, it's probably this exact same beanbag. So are you guys. With. And I, what I would do is I put it in between my table and my like my my chair i had like a big you know like a big green chair and it would like cocoon and i would just get in it and so like, you'd turn into like a little hot dog yeah i would hot dog it for sure yeah it was amazing that's weird like, honestly a great way to sleep tonight do it and then See, tell me about it yeah but like i call me when i sleep my i'm like very spread out my legs start moving in very awkward shapes do and you stuff. sleep well though Horribly. That you know why? I haven't slept in like. A, you're not sleeping on a beanbag. You know why babies sleep? You know how babies sleep well when they put because, them in that because they have they nothing coddle? in their brain. No, 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 no. I'm saying to get a baby to sleep, they have to wrap them in that blanket thing, and then they they're tucked in because it feels like you're in the womb. That's why you do the beanbag beanbag womb. On paper, it makes sense. You feel like a little baby when you're in the beanbag. Feel like a baby, yeah. You, you should put a diaper on and get in this thing. <laughs> put a diaper on, <laughs> shave my face. Don't and go get to the bathroom in the middle of the night. You just pee in the diaper, wake up, take care of it in the morning. Honestly, anything. Are we still a fantasy football show? I don't think we've been <laughs> in about a year. <laughs> in about a year. Oh, we welcome bike. There it is. To this channel, welcome bike to the headquarters. Welcome bike to fade the public. Make sure you're following the fade the public YouTube channel. And podcast as well will be the first link in the description. Are you leaving? I hope he's leaving. Um, oh, there they go. Yeah, we've got other content that you won't see on my channel going up on the actual Fade the Public YouTube channel. So make sure you do that today. Today, we've got on tap something amazing for you. I actually don't know what it is, but Animal's going to tell you. Yeah, it's not amazing. We're just going to talk a little bit about some of the stuff going on in the NFL today between, you know, big wide receivers Big quarterbacks. I'd like to just say one thing really quickly. Yes. Uh, that wired headphones are going to be cool in two years. Just wait on it. I'm telling you because, like, animal. Like, I'm not in the middle right now, so it doesn't matter. Snacks. There's, this is the real setup. It's okay. You don't there's cycles of things. Obviously, things go in and out of style. I'm telling you, all the hipsters are going to be wearing wired headphones soon, and then you're going to be like, fuck, Apple's going to come out with wired headphones again, like a different type of them that are, like, purchase well, I mean they already people. have that now they you have still it. get it do you, if, no every time you get a new they phone you yeah they still give those still actually no I think I just got the new phone and they didn't this is the first one I don't think I got wired headphones wow. yeah, I don't think they give them to you anymore I tried to return why them. makes no sense because they're Apple's so smart they're starting the cycle of bringing back bringing bike wired headphones they're like we start it now so no everyone gets used to not having them again and then we hit them with a new product wired headphones <laughs> yeah I don't know give it three years wired headphones are gonna be swaggy as hell again Mark my fucking words, Scott. Congrats. It's pretty wild. You walk, you know, walking up and down the city. I don't. Nobody has wired headphones anymore. That's the point. It's crazy. It's like it's like I'm, you know what? Fuck it. I'm gonna do it tomorrow. It's like baggy jeans are like they're they're fucking bike in Brooklyn. Yeah, they are. Everything no. hits Brooklyn first, and then <laughs> That's and then Brooklyn sucks. I agree. And then style hits everywhere else about a year later. Baggy jeans are back. And then no. I disagree. I don't know about that one. Fitted caps. I don't think they're back. You guys just don't get it. You guys just, it's so. You're right. I don't. Uh, yeah. I don't get the, the the Brooklyn lifestyle. There's nothing. Just making up shit that isn't actually back. Facts. But it's <laughs> everything starts there and then it trickles its way through. Animals, trickle trickle us through this episode, please. Well, I was going to say, why don't you trickle us into an intro? I trickled us. Uh, I just bought a pair of Crocs. Is that an intro? I meant like the actual intro. Didn't I just do that? No, we haven't. We haven't hit the intro. We didn't hit the intro last week. We haven't told. Oh well, Ike is now officially uh, oh, editing right. this podcast now. Yeah, Ike, you didn't hit the intro. Ike last hit the week. intro. Idiot. Ike, Ike's bikey, bikey. All right, so you got Crocs. Pretty cool. What color did you go with? What size did you go with? When are they going to be here? So my predicament is I didn't know whether or not to get a 10 or 11 because I'm a 10 and a half. Sometimes I'm an 11. So I did overshoot it. I went with the 11. I think that's I, a safe move. I texted Noah I and I was like, dude, Crocs run true to size. He didn't answer me back within five seconds. So I just made the purchase. <laughs> you didn't wait. <laughs> I didn't wait for him to answer. So I said, give it an hour. Yeah, I didn't want to wait an hour. Yeah. Uh, I wanted to order them now just in case. What if they're like... I can't wait for him to text you back. I'm like, yeah, dude, they, they run super... Sm- 
They're small. So big. Uh, super so you, big. So if you're thinking about getting 11, you should get like a nine and a half. Yeah, so I pulled the trig. I got a little donut pendant on it. I went with white. I like white shoes. Ah. I go white on white. And uh, I don't know. Noah had the white ones, and I was like, I kind of like those. And I respect it. I'm going to be living the croc I, lifestyle. I've I never like, tried them on before. I do white. I do white shoes, too. Yeah, I go white on white for everything. I don't know about that. I got the well, Crocs. They should be here in, uh, I don't know, two to eight business days. Snacks, let me ask you something. How do websites work anymore if it's not Amazon? I just order everything on Amazon. I actually ordered a t-shirt from Hot Topic uh, the other day. Hot Topic's still a thing? Yeah, believe it or not. It's crazy. They still got cool shirts? They do. I bought a uh, pizza bagel shirt. That's pretty cool. It's very it's, uh, cool. Bagel Bites. Are Which Bagel one? Bites still purchasable bagel in bites. store? So not Pizza Bagels? No, Bagel Bites. Do you prefer Pizza Bagels over... Yeah, because I, I said They're pizza actually bagels, thinking that... Pizza bagels and pe- uh, pizza bagel rolls? Bites? No, bagel pizza bites. Oh, wait, bagel bites? Hold on. Pizza... Are, isn't Aren't pizza bagel bagels and bagel bites the, the same thing? It's the brand of pizza bagels, isn't right. it? Pizza bagels. I didn't know there was two different brands. I don't think there is. That's what I'm saying. it's just bagel bites. Yeah. yeah. We're saying the same thing. I think you were thinking about pizza rolls. I was. Yeah, yeah two yeah, different yeah. products all there's together. A, so it's a bagel bite shirt. You so know, would you prefer a pizza roll or a pizza bagel? Pizza bagel. Bagel. Yeah, not even close, dude. Pizza rolls are so overrated. Honestly, they're, sit, they're sit the not rest even of this good, one out. actually. No, I completely agree. Just sit it out. Also, what happened is I saw a viral video, and this really fat guy uh, had the shirt. I was like, that's a cool shirt. I'm going to buy that. And I just Because you're a really fat guy? Well, no. No, there wasn't a correlation there. It was more of the fact oh. that it was a cool shirt. And I just was pointing out that the guy is fat. All, All right. right. I have a major <laughs> announcement right now. Oh, yeah? 49ers running back Jeff Wilson recently underwent surgery to repair a torn meniscus. He's expected to miss four to six months means he'll be sidelined through the start of the regular season, which means all my Trey Sermon drafters. Let's fucking go. Wayne think, Gallman. I don't think Dumbass. that changed anything. Like, was Jeff Wilson a threat? Jeff Wilson's always a threat. All right. He's a triple threat. I would say he's more threatful than Steph Curry. They didn't, they didn't give Wayne Gallman $11.5 million to fucking rot on the bench. Wayne Gallman even on the Niners? Yeah. Are you sure? 2,000%. Yeah. He's getting cut before training camp. They gave him eleven and a half million dollars. Well, they'll probably cut Jeff Wilson now. Just cut everybody. Cut Sermon. Cut throw business. Just cut throw business. Trey Sermon, let's fucking go. Elijah Mitchell, let's fucking go. All right, so let's let's transition here into the uh, cutthroat business of the NFL. Cutthroat business. Julio Jones, one of the top wide receivers in the league. For ah, he many, don't score touchdowns. For, listen, let me finish. Sorry. For many years, although he doesn't score touchdowns. So, <laughs> off my board. Most receiving yards per game of off all time. Off my board. That's cool. So, you know, everyone knows about the rumors. Julio Jones possibly going to be traded, most likely going to be traded. What do we think? Let's Wait, start with can that. I ask one thing real quick? Maybe. Is it involved with Julio Jones? Yes. <laughs> okay. It's how this all came about with the yes. Shannon Sharp. Yes. Cunt. What What an unbelievable move. Played him. Bad. Played him. Well, now, they, do we think it was a stunt? Like, do we think Julio knew? Hell no. Yeah, I don't think so. Julio's never caused controversy in his whole career. Yeah, no. That Man was Sharp a, just hit him. Yeah, up. but then maybe that's why he did that because that wasn't doesn't look like he's causing controversy. It's not on Julio. The way it's I compared it, was okay, like, but that's why I asked. You think he was secretly behind it? I think it's a master class in marketing that we just he gave Julio and Shannon. I think they planned it. Well, Shannon did you know. say at the end we're live on air, but he waited till the end. I feel like you need to preface with that. You have yeah, to, yeah. The first thing you say, it's like, like fucked up. Like yeah. Dana Gordon, I'm in the car. Yeah, Dana Gordon, I'm in the car <laughs> with my <laughs> wife. My wife's on the phone. Yeah. Or my, I, what if, yeah, I'm on speaker. You're on speaker. My wife's in the car. <laughs> yeah, so he played him. But, I mean, it, listen, the Julio Jones, apparently he asked for the trade month yeah, before the ago, NFL yeah. draft. Yeah. Um, so I'm actually, I'm actually a little bit more surprised when that came out that he asked for the trade and it wasn't something that the Falcons pursued because of the, the cap. Well, so I think what's what's nice is that Julio was nothing like nice about this respectful situation. to ask before the draft saying, like, yo, if I'm gone, like, you guys can draft the wide receiver then. Like, you've. I'm letting you know before. Makes and then sense. Well, they if still that's, if to that's the case, then I trade it. Julio and I draft the quarterback or I trade back. Yeah. The, I, if I'm going to trade Julio Jones, I would never take Kyle Pitts at so four. This, this is where I want to start. Let's check Jamar Chase. Yes or no, do we think Julio's getting traded? Yes. Nick, no, don't, don't go from your heart. Go from your NFL knowledge. He's gone. He said gone. it. He yeah. said it. I agree. He's gone. I'm, I'm out of here. I'm out of there. I mean, it, it, you, he said it himself. I mean, they're just they're just probably in the process. They can't do anything yet until June I think 1st. June 1st. So yeah. they're probably going to agree to some deal like in two days leading up to it. Now, what do they, they get? A second? 
Well, so here was the next that's a question. Bloated, that's a bloated contract, and he's 32 years old. Next and he has, he's fine. He's fine He doesn't miss games, but he's always banged up. I don't care about value, what he gets. I don't care about any of that. All that matters is where's he going. Let's start Fair. talking teams. Teams for Julio. Because I have this shit list here from someone. I don't want to discredit anyone. I don't want to trash anyone. Don't trash um, him. Just say who did it. It was the Monday morning quarterback. <laughs> Listen, we ranked nine teams. In the best position to land Julio in a trade. Number one was the New England Patriots. That's strictly because he heard him say he wants to be a Patriot, right? Isn't that what the Wait, rumors so what is were? That was what the, is the, the ranking of this list? I don't... Well, you can read it. He, like, goes into detail on, like, why Who he thinks... Peter that, King? Uh, whoever wrote this. Peter King's a little sl- Connor much smarter. Order. Yeah. Con- oh, Connor, he's a dope. So, I'm just going to read you the list. You got number one, Patriots. Number two, Broncos. Makes no sense. Number three, the Ravens. Doesn't make any sense. Number four, the Titans. That one actually that makes, makes sense. sense. Number five, you got the Colts. I don't hate lot that. Of sense. Just a lot of a lot of sense. It's crowded. Vegas Raiders, no. Chargers, I hate it. I think it, but it makes sense. My ranking is that those six, five, four, but reverse. I think best landing spots for Julio. If we're talking about like keeping value and him staying afloat in the league, for me, it's Chargers without a doubt. Raiders at number two. Colts at number three. All right. So you go to the Chargers. The only thing really there, if you think about it, you think about it first off, you're like, oh, it's a little bit of a well, messy. Mike Williams would think be if it's a little bit of a messy cool. situation. Mike Williams last year contract. Hunter Henry's already gone. Otherwise, it's a target funnel between Keenan Allen, Julio, and Austin Eckler. Three pretty good fucking targets to throw to. And in Las Vegas, they have nothing there besides Waller. And we've seen Gruden produce wide and receiver ones before. Yeah, and Hunter Renfro. I mean, I don't, I don't know if we could find two more opposite players. And Brian Edwards. And, that, that'd uh, be a beautiful combination, just tearing up defenses together. Okay. So we have, we have the Raiders, where I think Julio can realistically get 135 targets if he lands in Las Vegas, and then the Colts. The Colts is the one I'm like. The, I think the uh, the upside is is the. I think the range of outcomes for Julio in Indy is is 140 targets, but also like you know just the offense kind of fucking going down a slide real quick because of Carson Wentz. But those are my those are my top three teams. In terms I would of think, like, yeah, the Chargers have got to be the sickest landing that'd spot. That'd be a beautiful, beautiful landing spot for him. You know, Justin Herbert, Don Keenan, Julio, There's no, there's Eckler. like no, you, you name question marks with, with, with the Raiders and with the Colts. Where's their question mark if he goes to the Chargers? I don't see one. That's a ceiling is the roof. So, I mean, the move. question mark would be when he has those division games against the Broncos and gets locked the fuck down. Those are two games right away you can't count on Julio for. Just saying. But seriously, because you guys obviously aren't taking me serious right now. Um, <laughs> Why the Broncos are on that list is just the Broncos at number two makes no sense. We have too much depth at wide receiver. And like, just, no. He's, he's going to the Patriots. Yeah, I like how Which they I have hate. the Packers on here at eight because I think it's hilarious. Imagine... Like, they bring in Julio, and Rodgers is like, yeah, I'm not staying still. Doesn't now move the needle like, for me. Yeah. yeah, he's like, yeah, I'm still leaving. Could you, ima- like could you imagine Julio Bay. Jones, Devontae Adams? Holy shit. And Jordan Love. <laughs> <laughs> no, Blake Bortles. <laughs> and Drew Locke. No, okay, so Julio's gone. Yeah. We all think kind of Chargers probably. Well, I, like realistically, where do you think he's going to land? We real, thought, realistically, I, I, think like I would say New England. It's probably going to happen. You think that? Like, so we've talked where we think we want him to go would be the best place for him. I think now, if he goes to LA, he holds like really good fantasy value and dynasty value for two years. I think oh, that's a best case scenario for fantasy is LA. Did you guys see? I actually sent it to the. Um, wait, wait, hold on, real no, quick. This is, this is the same. Uh, no, I know. I, I was going to ask if you have like Vegas odds on next landing spot. I saw they were all over the place. That's what I'm saying. Every website yeah. you go to. They're all to, different. I was you can tell like some of them are just so off because they'll have yeah. a random team. I always, like bu- number two, I always like, believe, if it's not like FanDuel or DraftKings, I usually don't so believe So I it. actually kind of like the Titans here. I could pull up. I have DraftKings as of like yesterday-ish. Uh, I like the Titans. New England as, was plus 400. Uh, Atlanta was plus 500. LV, Vegas is 500, Chargers 600, Baltimore, Indy 700, Jacksonville and San Francisco 800. Jacksonville would be cool. Jacksonville's an interesting spot. That I don't would love be cool. it for fantasy. No, but that it's, would it's a messy situation. San Fran, I think would be I hate that. I hate it, but like Shanahan, they're like a ready to go team. I mean, he's already used Julio in like 170 target capacity. They yeah, play, like they I, I could totally see together. him saying like let's make a splash just get That's such an odd like who just ah, dude, him Debo, Ayuk and Kittle together. Damn. That's insane. insane. It's ridiculous. Yeah, but I think it's very, very realistic. I guess. I don't know. They just gave up a ton. So if we to get had to right now, three. if you had to make the bet, you had to make the bet. Who are you taking? Where are you putting your money on? I got. Dude, what's the what were the Titans? I would, again? I would take the value. I, yeah, would, I like the I, Titans. 
I would take the value on the Chargers at six hundred. Uh, if I had to, if it was all straight money line, if I was just like picking all the odds were the, yeah, same, the same, I would probably take New England. Uh, Tennessee, I mean, I guess it's just a lot of these teams. You look at like Baltimore, you look at well, San so Fran, you look at Tennessee. They're all like such run heavy teams, and it feels like Julio's see going to waste. The, um, AJ Brown tweet, yeah, of him trying to recruit Julio. He's just a younger version of Julio. Yeah, but I mean, it would be an amazing, uh, ridiculous, be yeah. an amazing duo on the field with Derrick Henry uh, in the backfield. You know, I'll run those play actions. It'd be a fun offense. Yeah, it would be a very. All fun right, offense. so I'm going to go with the uh, 49ers. I'm going to go with the Titans. All right. Well, you heard it here first. Julio Jones will be a 49er from Animal, and Julio Jones will be what a Tennessee goes Titan. To KC? Don't say that. <laughs> Don't say They're that. They're on the list. They're plus 2,500. Yeah, but not Tyree on my Kill, Julio, and Travis Kelsey. Not on my list. Be incredible. All right. So that's, I mean, there's really not much else to say about Julio. We're just going to kind of wait. Hopefully, like, nothing happens. Uh, it, it will. Won't happen. Well, it won't happen until June, June 1st. Yeah. yeah, we're good. We're good. We'll say, like, tomorrow. <laughs> like, all yeah, of tomorrow will be like, <laughs> agreed in principle. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that would suck. Trade will be made official on June 2nd. Yes. All right, so let's move over to the next high-profile athlete, NFL player who could be on the move. That keeps getting recognized all over the place, Animal? No, I was going to go with Aaron Rodgers first. Okay. Aaron Rodgers, there was a uh, it was an awesome clip with Kenny Main. He uh, was doing his last. If you, you still haven't watched it? No, you, you should watch it, it now. Um, he was doing his last sports center. Right. Don't ruin it for me yet. And uh, he was just having a little interview. Right I'm assuming. Yes. All of that's appreciated. Sorry we'll to play tell it for you so hard about the Packers, even though that's what the people want to know. But it sounds like you don't know. This is the actually. end. So yeah. we'll so let I, you decide that. The the end end's the best part. Last time we did the interview together, you told me to go heavy in the cryptocurrency game. I did. Uh, we're down 40%. Then I lost my job. Gretchen just wants a new comforter. <laughs> you, Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> <laughs> It's classic. <laughs> I just love how he says it and then walks away. It's I'm so surprised good. Sports Center like tweeted this, is, this out. This is his last one. No, I know, but Sports Center was like where I watched it. I'm surprised they said that. Like they allowed him to say "fuck you" on camera. Well, what are they going to do? He's yeah, leaving. Yeah, come it doesn't on. matter. Um, but they're promoting it. I'm 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 surprised that they put it on there because they're smart. It's going to get a ton of views. Oh, they're yeah. not smart. They're terrible. How many views does that have right now? Seven hundred thousand million. Surprised that's not more. Yeah, so it was just an awesome clip. I, you know, I, I liked it. It was like that realism. Yeah, was, no, it was great. It was, it was great. It was funny. Rogers, and, uh, but Rogers is like that. He's a very real guy. Like when he goes on that. Rogers uh, that, is cool. Kenny Maine's the that goat, creepy obviously. nerd yeah. Pat McAfee show. He is, he opens up there. Which I was going to go to. You know, June first is a big date in this uh, NFL world we're talking about right now. So I think what we're going to see is after June first. Aaron Rodgers is on the move. Let's let's do this again with the same thing we do with Julio. But I would honestly. say Rodgers is less likely to be on the move than Julio. I don't so, think Rodgers gets traded. Okay, so I that was going to be so my either. question: Is do we think Rodgers stays in Green Bay or is he on the move? I think I he think he's stays. going. I think he's. St- I think You're this is his last year. I think he, I don't think he ends up on another team. I think if it's not with the Packers, it's because he's like actually taking the year off. I don't think he gets traded. And he's so hosting Jeopardy too. All right, so Aaron Rodgers That's is one hundred percent on the mood on the move. The next question I was going to ask is. What team do you see him going to? Okay, you could just say the Broncos. All right, so Falcons. I see the Broncos. 100%. It's the only logical place. So, it makes yeah. a lot of sense, yeah. All right, so. Where else, where else, who else is going to trade for him? So, seriously, now, uh, you know, all, all jokes aside, Aaron Rodgers is a Bronco. Is he your QB1? So, Aaron Rodgers and Julio Jones are both now in Denver. <laughs> Maybe, yeah. But not Julio. Just Aaron. Ridiculous. So, but Aaron Rodgers, seriously, he's on the Broncos right now. Where is he in your QB uh, rankings? Just like redraft? Top yeah, five. Redraft, for sure. Uh, probably not much. Honestly, it doesn't really change much for me. Like, does he go up any higher than where he was? No. I mean, no. he's not going to be above Mahomes for me. He's not going to be above... Uh, I think he could throw 50 touchdowns. Yeah. He'll he'll be in that tier with everybody else behind Mahomes for me. Like, I actually like Lamar Jackson as the quarterback, too, this year. I think that's going to be an unpopular take, but I like him coming back as a two. And then you have the tier of Josh Allen, Kyler Murray, uh, Aaron Rodgers, like, those guys. So I think he fits right in there. If you want to argue him as high as QB3 if he goes to Denver, like, I'm fine with that. Yeah. Sorry. What? Sorry. Would have been the tier with Daniel Jones. Big year coming. Josh Allen type leap. I'm actually, like, I, D- Daniel Jones is a guy I'm going to own a lot of in fantasy. So he's, this, it's gonna, this is going to be a big year. Yeah. I think it's just the players around to make up the, the quarterback yep. play. They finally got some fucking weapons that they healthy, desperately they got needed. Weapons, like, yeah, the, the offensive all, line should be DJ. better. Some experience now. Let's go. DJ over Aaron Rodgers. Let's Rogers. make or break year anyway. Yeah. And I tell you, if he breaks and Aaron Rodgers is still a Packer, I, I now, just, that we have, now that we have all these picks next year, just wait. Just how, wait. How did we go from Aaron Rodgers 
to Daniel Jones. Well, because Nick brought him on. Because uh, it's I think graceful da- to 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 transition from one to the other. Why? Why? Rogers only has one more Super Bowl than Daniel Jones. Stop it! Stop it! We're not going to do that. We're not going to do that. So anyway, we're all very high on Aaron Rodgers as a Bronco. To sum that up, <laughs> you <this>. piece of shit. <laughs> all right, skirt. Let's get into our actual fantasy talk for the show. Oh, what was that? I don't know. <laughs> I don't remember. <laughs> We're going to give you our our way too early number one finisher predictions for each position. So we're going to give you like, who do we think is going to be the QB1? Not like a QB1, the QB1. Who's going to be the RB1? Not a RB1, the RB1. Got it. You actually want to keep going? No. Nah. Who's going to be... The wide receiver one. Not a, a wide, wide receiver, receiver one. one. And who's going to be the tight end one. And not a tight end one. Nick, start us off with your QB one. Not a QB one. The QB one. Well, I think Daniel Jones is going to be a QB one. All right, you, you lose. I agree. There wasn't anything I to lose. I didn't know there was a winner or There loser. wasn't anything to lose, but you just lost it. <laughs> Uh, listen, I'm going Patrick Mahomes. Uh, okay, like oh, the easy answer. Everybody. The easy answer because it's the right answer. When when the fucking birdie is there for you, just put it in, animal. Just put it in. All right. Just tap just it, tap it in. in. Just tap it in. Just tap it in. Give it a little tappy. Tap 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 a roo. So tap Patrick Mahomes, it. listen. He had like a down year last year. 38 touchdowns, didn't play a full 16 games. Their <laughs> offense, <laughs> down year. Their <laughs> offensive line is is going to be really fucking good this year. They revamped it. They plugged yeah, the whole thing. Go yeah, pissed about that. He was under like the problem that he had last year was that he was under pressure way more than he had been in the few oh, years yeah, leading no, up to it. it. So I the offensive it. line is good. Let Tyreek Hill get fucking time. Let everybody be healthy on that offense and like. I mean, he's gonna throw like forty eight touchdowns again this year. So yeah, yeah it's Mahomes it's impo- it's really impossible to argue that as number one. But I, I'll go out of the. Not really out of You're the gonna box. You're going to go Kyler, aren't you? No, I'm going to go with Josh Allen. And, uh, All right. Was Josh Allen the QB1 last year? I think he was. He was close I to it. I think he finished yeah. as he it. Might, he might have. Um, I mean, the rushing upside, Brian Dabble did not leave as a head coach, which I think is huge. It's another year in that system. We saw what Diggs did for him. Offensive line is good, and he just keeps ascending. And you know, Is he going to be your first quarterback off the board? He, if you're drafting? Uh, no. 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 Patrick. He'll be my second, though. That was just a question. He'll be my second. Okay. Kyler, that's another spot. We should have talked about Julio in Arizona. Yeah, that would be such a weird uh, be weird landing spot. Very weird, but could you imagine? Hopkins, DeAndre Hopkins, Julio, A.J. Green, Larry Fitzgerald. Let's go. Madden 2000. I saw he was trying to recruit effect. him. It's just like there's... It's like, well, yeah, it's like well, it's nah, Madden. It's never going to happen. It won't happen. Never happened. And they would honestly would hate that for fantasy because it's like... Who's going to have the shit week? Yeah. Someone's having a shit week. I just wouldn't draft any other pass catchers. Yeah, you stay away. Yeah, so what happens. It becomes the same frame. You just, draft Ky- you just draft Kyler. Yeah. All right, so oh, whatever. Right you guys had two shit. Ready? My QB1. Let me guess. Not Aaron, a QB1. Aaron Rodgers on the Broncos. I had that, and then I changed it because I just <laughs> didn't want the whole episode to be about Aaron Rodgers. On so I pivoted to another guy I'm very high on. His name is Carson Wentz, a former MVP candidate. Here's what I like. Hold on, hold on. We're not talking about a QB1. We're talking about the, the QB1. Yes. Yeah. All he needs to do is go back to his MVP. This is atrocious. And this no, is no, the by far Max, the worst. That was four case. years ago. Fantasy I don't need to football. hear your information. It's fantasy football. You wonder why they don't take you seriously? It's fantasy football. I'm talking about. I can about name 20 quarterbacks that I would rather have than Carson Wentz. But the value is going to be great. <laughs> it's not and about you, value. But it's you about said the, the QB1. QB1 yeah. Not. A Q- All right, go yeah. ahead. I want to hear the reasoning. Oh, yeah. They're good. They got a good line. <laughs> Frank Reich's his, his coach again. <laughs> Honestly, so yes. That, that's where I'm going with this. Is like He's going back to his old you know, offensive coordinator's coach. He's just going to get back to his old form. Philadelphia was a toxic, toxic place. He's in Indianapolis now. It's a happy, fun place with bright blue colors. And no weapons. With no weapons. bright blue You ever hear colors. Michael Pittman Jr. and Paris Campbell and maybe Julio Honestly, Jones? Honestly, no, I haven't heard of Paris Campbell because he hasn't played in two years. He hasn't. That's going to kill me and die. Animal. <laughs> you literally just turned this segment from the QB1 into a guy I kind of like at value. No, I honestly think he has a chance to be the highest scoring quarterback in fantasy football. I, that is absolutely insane. I'm I'm flabbergasted. He this a five-yard pass take. to Jonathan Taylor. He goes 80 yards for a touchdown. Those are Carson's points, too. You mean to Marlon Mack? Dude, Marlon Mack's uh, 28 and a half. Is that the best over. stack in best ball right now? Carson Wentz and Marlon Mack? I do have a uh, Carson Wentz um, 
Best ball stack. I'm is Carson Wentz going to even be a top 10 quarterback? Yeah, he's going to be a number one. This is insane. This is this is an insane take right now. Well, I told you I had Aaron Rodgers first. Oh my! All right. Okay. okay. Now let's head over to the RB one, not a RB one. We're gonna snake draft this animal because I need you to just build on this momentum. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go back to my roots here. I'm just gonna go with Derrick Henry. He's a freak athlete. Listen, until someone else can be the RB one, he will be the RB one. Fine. I know that makes sense. It's good. No, I'm I know that makes sense to you. It's hard to argue it. Yeah, he's he is Derrick Henry. He is all running back. Yeah, that's it. He's beast. Don't nice. say Derrick Henry. You have to say someone else. I'm not gonna say Derrick Henry. Um, I don't want right. I don't want to uh, give Gary the obvious. Gary Brightwell. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was saving that for sleeper of the year. I'll uh, I'll go Austin Eckler. Oh my! God. I like that take. You like that take? I'll but, go Austin. But Carson Eckler. Wentz gets an outrage. Austin Eckler was like a fucking top three fantasy quarter uh, running back ago. points per game like every time. He was time. never a fantasy yeah. top. No. Do you know how many targets in in the games that Justin Herbert played last year? He was on pace for like 135 receptions. This is where I was shit. going. The receiving work with, receiver, Her- he's not with, running back. with exactly. Herbert. Trash. And what's behind him? Nothing. I Out of the box a little bit. Justin take. Herbert. Austin. Corey Lindsley coming in in the offensive line. Oh, the yes. offensive line's much better. They just drafted Slater. Yeah, fuck it. Austin Eckler. I'm a fan of that pick. I'm a fan of that pick. Uh, RB1. You said Carson Wentz is the QB1. <laughs> Not a QB1. I'm going to go with another hot take here, and I'll go with uh, Christian McCaffrey. Wow, look at you. Look at this team. No, I will go with... Uh, Mickey I w- Consensus. <laughs> I will go with... I'll go with Nick Chubb. I like that. Love that. I love like that. I think Nick Chubb can put together a Derrick Henry type year. I think uh, if he doesn't miss the games last so year, he, played he in twelve. He played in 12 games <laughs> last year. He had 1,200 yards from scrimmage. It's like the RB11. If you look at the second half of the year, by the time he was healthy, like it became his backfield, not so much Kareem Hunt's backfield. Second year in this uh, offensive system, their offensive line went from like one of the worst in the league to top three in run blocking. Like yeah. that's they did exactly what the Rams did two, like three or four years ago when Sean McVay came in. Nick Chubb is one of the best pure runners you know we've seen in the NFL in a long time. So like I wouldn't be surprised if he if he pulls off a year where he's averaging like 120 rushing yep. yards a yep. game. No, he stay, I, he I stays it. healthy, ceilings the roof. Yeah, I agree with that one a lot. Fuckers. All right, wide receiver one. Um, I mean, I don't... Listen, there's a lot of names that could... I, I, this is one of the uh, the years I feel like a lot of names are going to come from like the anybody, blue. Yeah. Could be Tyreek Hill. Could be Devontae Adams. But I think, like, Calvin Ridley has just as good a chance if Julio Jones is gone. I think I uh, Stephon Diggs can pull off the wide receiver one. I was say. A.J. Brown can easily pull off the wide Jones. receiver one. I'm going to go with... Uh, I'm going to go with... I'm going to go with A.J. Brown. I'll go A.J. Brown as a wide receiver one. They don't throw the ball a lot in Tennessee, but this year there's no one to throw the ball to uh, because Jonah Smith is gone. Corey Davis is gone. You know, I keep forgetting that they lost those two guys. That's that's yeah, that's like that's, that's that was big. like 30% of uh, Ryan Tannehill's pass attempts last year. So, like, even if they're just, like, forced shitty targets, five yards to A.J. Brown, A.J. Brown's a yak god. It's like, he'll turn those five-yard plays into 17-yard plays, and I wouldn't be surprised if he just puts up an absolutely ridiculous year and, uh, and goes off for wide receiver one-type numbers. Well... It's really hard to argue that because he's a freak of nature. What is his third year now? Yep. Oh, God. He's three years stronger. I'm petrified of... Uh, he can't get any stronger. He's been like... I feel like he was born like that. Yeah. Well, since we started the show and we said 100% Julio Jones is going to get traded, I'll go with Calvin Ridley only because I saw my my two blue eyes en route to an E-Town Get Down Championship, what Calvin can do. And I'm, I don't have the numbers off the top of my head, but I'm pretty sure... The games that Julio missed last year, he fucking balled out like a like a like a sociopath. A top bullet point. In the seven games that Julio Jones has missed over the last two years, Calvin Ridley has gone for eight ninety one, five one ten, eight one thirty six, six fifty one, six fifty m one, eight one twenty four and one, ten one sixty three and one, and five and one thirty one. Ike, Whew. let me uh, let me send you that picture. Make sure I send that to you. But that is like that's like almost hard to believe when you yeah, read that. That's off. wild. Those yeah, that's that's insane what I'm numbers. It's ridiculous. Insanity. Yeah. Ridiculous. And I like yeah, they brought in Kyle Pitts, so if who doesn't matter. That's lunacy. So I'll go Calvin Klein Ridley. So I um also have Calvin Ridley on my uh sheet here. Unbelievable. Uh, Sharps. But let's, because I'm a team player. Let's do a little Pittman pivot right I'm here. I'm gonna pivot. Cool. <laughs> you gonna I'm stack gonna, that I'm Paris Campbell no, Stack that ass animal. I'm gonna pivot to my, my number two guy who I had in this spot. 
with uh, DeAndre Hopkins. I'm going to think he's going to get back to wow. straight up old form, go right back to the wide receiver one. He finished as a wide receiver five last year. Kyler was a little banged up, I think, and, you know. I like that take. I, I feel like he's going as, like, an unforgotten guy this he, year. Like, yeah, everyone, I feel like he always does. I think yeah. everyone's way too low on him. He definitely had a couple of those, like, blow-up games where, like, you know, it definitely helped him overall. He just didn't score the touchdown. If he scored, he had six touchdowns last year. If he scored uh, 10 yeah, or so, he'd 10. probably be, like, the wide receiver two or yeah. something like that. Yeah. Who was one last year, Diggs? No, uh, was Diggs was... Uh, Devontae uh, Adams, no. bro. Adams was oh, one with duh. 14 games. 18 touchdowns. <laughs> and it wasn't even close, to be honest with you. Yeah. 15 points. He's remarkable. Now. Okay. DeAndre Hopkins, I like that. Yeah, D-Hop getting back to his old form. It's a good one. Getting back Even to my weights. he weights. really kind of never lost it. Is there a point of talking about tight ends? No. Yeah. Are yeah, you going yeah. to take go with the hot take and go Waller here? No. Are you going to go with Kyle Pitts? No. <laughs> yeah, you are. You. <laughs> Kyle, right, Kyle Rudolph. Travis Kelsey's been <laughs> Delete, 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 delete. <laughs> nah, delete. Nah, Kelsey's nah. been the tight end one literally for as long as my brain has worked. Um, Just like the last four or five so years. So, actually... So to be completely honest, I had George Kittle revival season number one, and then I thought about what you, it. Like, what's the basis of that? I other other it, than you're getting cute. Oh, I thought about like Trey Lance being the if he's the rookie, he's going to start. Like he's just going to pepper his tight end. Run guy though. Yeah. So I didn't. I changed it to Pitts. If Julio is gone, he's going to get a lot of targets. It's just one of those things where you wouldn't expect it. And it's the tight end yeah. position. So everyone kind of sucks already. So the fact that like you got a guy so who's a freak you, athlete at that position. So I've been looking at a lot of this. I've been going through the underdog ADP like pretty frequently, and right now Kelsey's like a first round pick. Yeah. Kittle and Waller are both like two twelve three one, both in the you know twenty five twenty four whatever. Pitts is the tight end four in ADP already. It's crazy, but at like he's at like pick fifty five to sixty. So there's a monster tier gap. Yeah, I'm assuming Julio leaves. And that, and he jumps, jumps up into like the yeah. third round. Like he's going to be in that Waller Kittle conversation. I'm like, I can't. There's no fucking way I'm pulling the trigger on in any redraft league on a rookie tight end in the third round. They, no, they've no. I barely want to do that with Waller. They've, or Kittle. No, they've notoriously ball, not um, been great there rookie years. I did a Falcons best ball stack with uh, Matt Ryan, Calvin Ridley, Kyle Pitts, and uh, Russell Gage. I like that a little bit. I thought you were. I honestly thought you were going to say Hayden Hurst at the end. <laughs> like that would be a player you would like. I feel like have. randomly. <laughs> you might, <laughs> might have. Actually you might have done the, fun, the. I think we got Hurst also. Cinco no and I split it. Yeah. Love that. <laughs> Love that insurance card for you. Yeah. Uh, I'm. I'm probably not going to end up owning any college. Way bits. too. Way too rich. Way too rich. That's going to be the problem. It's going to come down to where I don't really want any of the high end tight ends this year. I just like don't want to draft the tight end that early ever. Yeah. Well, like, see, the thing is, I'm not gonna, like. My draft Give me Irv this Smith year. at like tight end. I was 12, just gonna, too. Like, you you could win championships with Evan Ingram as your tight end. You think you're okay? Easy. I mean, was he your starting tight end? Yeah, I thought it was Goddard. Well, at the end, yeah, but Ingram the whole fucking year. I mean, your whole team was. Cal- um, What's going on with Ertz right now? Is he he's still on the Eagles. He's not selling the Eagles. Yeah, gotta wait till after June first. Probably. But this is also like the same fucking. He's gonna we get here every he, year. He'll probably he be can on go the to Colts. Indy. He can yeah. go to Indy. I would That's actually a, like him. He'll that probably be, good. be on the Colts. He's someone I'd be like okay dabbling with if he went to Indy. Absolutely yeah. sure, because there's no other competition. That would be interesting. Well, Ollie Cox is like big and like cool, but like he's not like a starting tight end. Big and Phil Cox, yeah, yeah. Your For Animal Sanctuary, he was. So wait, I Kyle Pitts. Who are you? You guys even are you guys doing tight ends? I'm just gonna keep the Travis Kelsey. All right, boring. Your Kelsey also cool. All right, so you have there Waller over Kittle, right? The finishers, yes. uh, number one finishers at each position from all of us. You can obviously decide who's you like the best. It's pretty obvious who was the most inventive and uh, creative and uh, created their way out of the fucking competition. Thought provoking. You mean moronic? So listen, what I was going to say is we, uh, you know, we're we're big time. We are big time. We're big time now. I'm going to be honest with you. It's happening like semi-frequently now to me. So what I want to say is we're big famous. We're very famous stars. Nick uh, was spotted on the subway and uh, met with a wonderful so greeting. I was spotted on the, yeah, I was spotted on the subway by, uh, hold on, he's in my DMs. Then Snacks was spotted at MSG. Mikey Alvarez. Another shout out to you. Gr- great, wonderful greeting. Oh, yeah. Guy You're came- a New York sports legend. When you yeah. started off that text, he was at the Knicks game the other night, the first playoff game, and when you texted us, it was like ha- it was uh, it was probably halftime. It, it was I think it was just about to be halftime. People were going. I forget how you and... started off the text messages. My first immediate thought was like, oh, he just got kicked out. I'm like, damn, snacks. <laughs> like you got, we went to the Knicks playoff game and you got kicked out. 
Like, that's where I crossed the line. That like, would have been rock bottom. I'm like, me. okay, it's endearing when it's the Giants game or the Yankees game, like the sixth inning or some shit, but the Knicks playoff game, I'm like, God. No, I, no, no, I know. And I can tell you, nobody was getting kicked out. They had 15,000 people screaming, fuck Trey Young. Yeah. There was yeah. a seven-year-old next to me screaming, fuck Trey Young. <laughs> they were grown-ass women, moms, grandmas, fuck Trey Young. It was hysterical. But yeah, some kid came up I to me, screamed it. my name, and I was like, fuck. I got very embarrassed. So my, you're two for two at Knicks games getting recognized. Remember yeah. the kids? Oh, wow, that's crazy. Yeah. yeah. Next yeah. game. And he gave me a bear hug, too. Kid was in great shape. So, so, that was a great so I had the kid on the subway, Mikey Alvarez. So we got... I was, it was, like, kind of embarrassing, though, because there was, like, there was like a, a dad with his, like, daughter, and they're, like, mm. looking at me, like, what's this guy doing? I'm like, who's oh. this guy? Got a, a guy I told you I ran into today. He was actually, he's in our Discord. He's in a Big Dog's Dynasty startup league right now. <laughs> um, and he, you know who he's drafting with? The kid who's, Yannick. like, who won the monkey knife fight giveaway. <laughs> You what? Yannick. Yeah. <laughs> you know who he's drafting with? Yannick. That would have been a good. Been Yannick a good, and uh, Scott. <laughs> good pull. Yeah, he pulled up on me right. In, I was I was uh, walking into McDonald's. It was fucking. It was awesome. He was like, Ooh. I was like, unfortunately, yeah. And unfortunately, yeah. yeah that's that's cool. Grabbed the pick, yeah. yeah. So it's and been happening a, a lot lately. And then, and then I was at. A uh, I was do door dashing. I was going walking out of a Chipotle with some and with a mask on, and uh, some guy comes up. He's like, "Yo, you from Big Dogs?" I was like, "Yo, what's up?" Yeah. He's like, yeah, and then we did like a handshake, and like, I he like went for a fist bump, and I went for a handshake, and I just like grabbed his fist. He's like, that was awkward. Put the car, you be you <laughs> like, like yeah, the and car. then we like shook hands. It's like you know how like you're disappointed when you meet your heroes in real life. <laughs> <laughs> that handshake like personifies it. It's like, damn, bro, Big Dog sucks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm subscribing right now. Uh, yeah, so like we're really famous now, and uh, it's wild, cool. wild few days. Yeah, it's pretty cool. The timing was a, uh, it was cool. It was like Bing Bang Boom, impeccable. Yeah. All right, that's it. Everybody, that's the show. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, we're gonna actually we, do a to. Uh, no. We're gonna go uh -huh. into a um, a snacks pantry. Something we actually haven't done. It's been a while. In a long time. It's been a while. It's one of our favorite off season, in season segments. Oh uh, yeah. Oh yeah. All right. Well, so I have I had two an easy one and a hard one, but since it's been it's been a minute since we did it, I'm I'm doing the easy one. No, let's do the hard one. Well, I don't have it written down. I, I gotta, gonna I gotta say, go get for my, the record. I asked you, for the hard one. I gotta. All right, let me go get my phone. No, we don't have time for that. Just do no, the easy one. We have plenty one. of time. What, you want the hard or easy one? Just do whatever hard. you have in your hand. Well, how easy is easy? I mean, it's you should know it. I mean, I would hope well, let's so. give us the topic. What is all right, it? all right. What's so, in honor of Kenny Mayne and his last day at ESPN, uh, sports center. The best sports center anchors, top five. Well, Stuart Scott. You should be easily get the first three. Stuart Scott, Scott Van Pelt, number three. SVP is number one. Is Kenny Main on there? Kenny Main's number two. <laughs> Wait, you said those are the, the, I thought those were going to go Bing Bang Boom. Now it gets a little trickier. Uh, Four and five. Chris Berman. A, uh, he he was, but I, I associate him more with like NFL primetime and, and yeah. NFL countdown, so I left him so off like, that. But he was an anchor. I literally right. only watch uh, Bucci. Bucci was, he, I thought of Bucci. Bucci's very good, but I ultimately left him off because, I, I'll, I'll give you a hint. I'll give you a hint. These next two are still very prominent in sports media today. They're so just they, not on ESPN. Okay. Um, that should give it away. Skip Bayless. <laughs> no. <laughs> Although, Skip's one of my heroes. Uh, I love Skip. He's got great takes. Who Who's on, like, the... Hmm. I only watch, like, Scott Van Pelt. I, I was going to say, the only time I watch Sports Center is at, like, midnight now. Yeah, I don't watch... Like, it's the only time I do, and too. And I watch That's NFL why. Network, so, like, are you including... None, none of these guys... You watch the NFL Network? Yeah, are we including NFL Network? I said they're not on ESPN anymore. They like, used to be Sports Center anchors. Not on like, ESPN anymore. Oh, I don't really know who used to be what. I'm sounding like an idiot if I start saying like Peter Schrager, but like I wouldn't no, no, say, no, 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 I wouldn't no. say Peter Schrager. Joe Rogan, not Joe Rogan. He, he's very prominent on NFL Network. Very, he's literally maybe the most prominent person on the NFL. Scott Network. Hansen. <laughs> That's <laughs> great guess, but no. Scott Hansen would be electric on Sports Center. Oh, yeah, he'd be probably the best. Uh, it's too confined for him. He needs. Hey, Adams. No, you guys, you guys want a hint? Linda Cohen, naming good morning football. Want a hint? People. Yeah, please. I he runs. He runs for charity at the combine. Oh, Rich Eisen. Rich Eisen. Well, yeah, he's on Peacock now. Yes, yeah. Rich Eisen. Rich Eisen used to do. Honestly, I don't even know he was a Sports Center anchor. Him and Kenny Mayne were like the best duo. It was, it was him and it was Kenny Mayne and uh, 
Rich Charlie Eisen Cassidy. and then okay, SVP right, right. and Stuart Scott. It. Those were like the two. Yeah. And Bucci and John a- and John Anderson, who was an honorable mention. Um, so yeah, so it's all great. There's uh, there's one more. Was he number four? He was Rich number Eisen? four. Yes. All right, so we got number five. Number uh, five. I knew the last two would be difficult. You know what's awesome? That show where it was like people were competing to be uh, an ESPN, a sports center anchor. Dream job. Dream job, yeah. yeah. I don't Have think you guys you, ever seen the show. Great, um, yeah, there's one guy uh, that's on it. Still. Oh, yeah, still? He's a sports center anchor, oh, yeah. There's a great show. that, And he didn't Aaron, even win it either, which is funny. Aaron Sorkin wrote it. It was like a, it's like a basically a show about like two sports center anchors, but it wasn't called sports center. It was like sports. Really? Network. Well, Farron Sorkin is like really old. Not like really old, but it's like 90s or like early 2000s. Farron Sorkin wrote It's probably awesome. Yeah. I don't really know who that so is, but I, I watched know it. it's awesome. they're all about it in Entourage. You'll recognize the guy too right him away. I the writer because the, the, um, the main actor Sorkin's in it man. is... Uh, Can I watch it like on a, SWAT. on a network right now? No, I think I like watched it like... Um, is like it like a, Playmakers where you got to like find an yeah. off script site that will is show that, How many seasons are there? There's like four or five. Oh, wow. No, wait, maybe just one. I don't know. It's like four or five, maybe four or five episodes and then it got canceled. Yeah, I don't remember. Hold on. I'm going to look it up right now. Uh, all right. Sports Center Anchor number five. Number five. Sports What's, Night. Oh, it's on Prime. Night. Oh, let's go. For real? Sick. How many yeah. seasons? Two. All right. How yeah, about we all watch bad. it and report back next week? Yeah, everyone go home. Uh, don't worry about number five. Uh, watch Sports Night. <laughs> everyone it's, a, yeah. <laughs> it's a uh, sitcom from ABC. And what written year? Written by Aaron Sorkin. What it year? was in uh, 1998. That's oh, not bad. And is it uh, actually a good, like, when you say a sitcom, I think of what like the rating? TV. Yeah, it's just not your style sitcom. This guy's in it. He's in SWAT. Oh, movie. fuck yeah. Seen him in I like that, dude. Shit. Yeah. I like right. SWAT as a movie way more than I should. I'm a big fan of that movie. Ooh. All right, you guys want me to give you number five? Kind of, yeah. Yeah, I guess. He's in a lot of Adam Sandler movies. Uh, John Stewart. Dude, I saw no. John Stewart. I was going to say that I saw John Stewart like a block away from here the other day. I was Did walking. You? He was walking with his son, I guess, or something. So I didn't want to like interrupt him. That's cool. And I'm not like a giant fan of him. So it would have been really awkward. Yo, John. Yeah. He, not like, really a big fan. What's he up? walked right by <laughs> me. Yeah. We we're like face to face. And I looked at him and he like knew I recognized him. We like looked Probably at each other. I guess like every single second. Like every single human that <laughs> yeah. passes by him. Yeah. Like every person that looks at Dan him. Dan Patrick. Uh, oh, Danica Patrick. Yeah. She's kind of hot. What? <laughs> I don't no, know. you said Dan Patrick. Yeah, I Dan guess. Patrick, you're fired. You're fired as fuck. Yeah. Dan Patrick, whatever. You know whatever. who Danica Patrick used to date? Aaron Rodgers, the Green Bay quarterback, future Bronco, future Falcon quarterback. No, you stop that madness. All right, I have to um, I have to be honest with you, snacks. I did not like that pantry. I didn't like it only because we had this conversation in the group chat. I feel like last week when I sent you the link of like Sports Center. Uh, you know what? I didn't, rem- didn't even remember that. Really? But I think that? we would have sat here for an hour if I did the other one. So that's why I did this one. Can you well, say what the what other was one the was? I will. It was ugliest, uh, ugliest breakups in sports because I was trying to keep. Ooh, I, was I was trying like to that. keep on take theme. You forever. It would take you for. It would. There's so you don't many mean romantic breakups. No, no, no. Like, like coach off a team, yeah. player off a team. That's lit. It was with the Aaron Rodgers, Julio Jones theme. So I, w- I did that, but I knew that would that. That's yeah, a that, long that one. That would have been. That's one you have to think on. That would have been a great pantry for this episode. It literally would have fitted right in. But it also would have taken a fucking hour, and you guys would have been burnt out after 20 minutes. Well, that's why we have editors. Make we got a train to catch. We got a train to catch too, though. No, you don't. I guess. Can, I made. I made sure. Can teleport. Know. Is there anything we need to? Oh. Uh, head over to uh, underdogfantasy.com or download the app. And if you're a new user, if it's the first time, use promo code BDGE. $25. You get $25 fucking dollars. That's a pretty fat promo. That's it a, is. If you deposit nice. 10 you get 25 That's d- more than double your money. That's a nice $35 thing. to Show lose. some fucking appreciation and do it. Either then, way, if you want to just see the ADP that we were talking about, it's free on their website and all their leagues are paid, so it's like legitimate ADP. I'll link that down below. But while you're there, you might as well throw 10 bucks and support the brand. All right, thumbs up if you enjoyed. Make sure you subscribe to the Fade the Public YouTube channel as well. And yeah, we'll see oh, you uh, One last thing. FB God and I do a, a stream uh, three times a week now, and we give out underdog winners, so... Use that promo code. You get that $35. You and come bet spend the opposite. It. You come spend it with me, God, and I will lose it for you. Wait, so. wait. One more question. I just got a, uh, a DM from my Twitter connect. He says, yo, this is super random and out of nowhere. If Twitter could focus on one area to make your life easier as a creator, what would it be? Um, Honestly, if I could have Twitter go back to 70 char- characters or fewer, I would love Twitter again. I hate Twitter, what it is right now. That's not, that's that's fake news. I don't hate Twitter. All they do is post links and like shitty fucking uh, everything. 
I hate fantasy football Twitter. Honestly, if, if I'm just going to be like, just worst. kick every, anyone who does fantasy content, just kick them off. I was just going to say, tell them, tell them get rid of fantasy Twitter. <laughs> yeah, if they, have fan, if they have a link in their bio to a fantasy website, kick them off Twitter. That would make it good again. All right. I hate you. Bye. Bye.